Have you ever been locked in love by user like I did? My profession might be one of the most gruesome, but simultaneously most thrilling callings in the entire universe. I wouldn't go as far as saying that I'm in charge of life or death, though, in some circumstances, it can lead to that question. In those cases, the answer is usually death. But if I tell you why I do all this, I'm sure you'll understand. In case you don't, then just hope that our ways never cross. Luckily, your chances minimize significantly when you choose not to fall in love or being fallen in love with. It's not always a choice though, is it? You may have heard of armor or Cupid or whatever the idea of an angel or god in diapers holding arrows is called in your language. A personification that is nowadays used to feed you with enough chocolates on Valentine's Day until you believe that the concept of love is something beautiful. Nobody likes to imagine a creature filled to the brink with hate and judgment, secreting nasty black substance. I will make your stomach turn. I'm here to let you know that the guardians of love are in no way as romantic as the books and artists depict. I know, because I'm one of them. One of the creatures that feed the moths in your stomach so they can slowly feast on your insides until you lose all of your mind and nerves. When you can't seem to understand how these so-called butterflies could ever make you feel so horrible. And if you cross paths, your vision won't get rose red from glasses. <laughs> it will be the arrow that I shove through your cornea. Of course I don't look that hateful on the outside. I like to blend in. If you live on this earth long enough, then you start to adjust and, well, if you saw me on the street, you might mistake me for your regular girl next door. <laughs> if you come close enough though, the demonic scent of pitch and sulfur will overcome you delicious. Besides that, I'm quite regular on the outside. I live in a regular apartment and do regular things. I buy groceries, smoke a cigarette, go for a run. From time to time I'll indulge in a rom-com to ridicule the problematic images depicted. For a love guardian, I might sound cynical and while it's necessary to be a realistic as one, my take on love hasn't always been this terribly negative. It got much worse when I was switched to a new department. You see, years ago I had quite a beautiful task, something even someone as bitter as me had no other choice than to enjoy. I would go from hospitals to living rooms or even taxi cabs to sprinkle my dust on birthing mothers. Sensing their emotion when hearing the first cry of their child makes even my non-existent heart ache a little. <laughs> However, due to a disproportionately large increase in cases, I hadn't been able to conduct my work thoroughly. Sadly, trying to explain to my boss that it's not my fault that humans have started to multiply like fucking rats only increased my punishment. So I was bumped to the most disgusting of all love sections. I was made in charge of the bridges. Have you ever spotted one of those bridges with the, a sickening amount of locks attached to them? Lovers will write their names under the locks and throw away the key as a metaphor for their everlasting love. Don't you absolutely adore those adorable gestures? Yeah, me neither. You might have spotted the locks on the bridge as a tourist actively during your last visit to Paris or Prague. Maybe you've added one to the thousand of other ones. Now let me tell you, the love bridges have been there much longer than the locks that humans add to them. A long time ago, when humanity started increasing, you will not believe the bureaucratic madness we had to go through. Love only gets solidified when it's caught and accepted by us. Only then are two souls bound together. We have different ways of doing so, but we learned that saving up love in a lock works perfectly well for us and the couples as well. And so when a new love is formed, a lock is created and added to one of the many love bridges over the earth. The golden key accompanying it is hidden inside the lover's hearts. Please don't mistake those locks with the ones you have seen on your trips though. It's truly a nasty trick by the humans to confuse our system. If their lock is authentic enough, it could be mistaken for an actual love lock. And when a real lock appears, I have no other choice but to bind those souls together for eternity, even when I despise doing so. 
So you might understand why those fake locks are making my work a living hell. Of course, on most days, a couple will come along and write their names with a sharpie on a cheap lock from the dollar store. I only need to huff and they fall off again, making their everlasting promise last approximately as long as the Instagram story they uploaded. While those couples can be annoying, this boring type of mundane work is part of every job. Paperwork, so to say. Breaking off a few superficial couples is not exactly stimulating, but it's not the part of the work that makes my blood boil. The hard cases, the ones that broke not only my spirit, but made me deeply lust for the murder of human beings. Those are the really solid ones. They're impossible to distinguish from the real thing when seen from the outside. It's a golden lock with names carved in with the blood of a lover. The key is buried deep inside their flesh. Only a few manage to create a lock like that, as it takes very particular combination of passionate emotions. If the emotion is strong enough, one individual might trick me into believing the love is true and will have to last eternally, even when it really shouldn't. Did you know that the brain circuits for love and hate are very closely linked? The feelings can so easily get mixed, which makes my work a real hassle. And if that wasn't confusing enough, love isn't equal all the time. But if the passion of one is strong enough, it can lock up the other soul as well. I can't check up on all of them after all, and so at times I will have to accept another person being locked inside the heart of someone. I've started visiting the most prominent bridges just to check up and possibly demask a sleazy couple, and some days I actually get very lucky. Yesterday was one of those days. I sat down on a bench right next to a bridge in Amsterdam. It was a warm spring day. This time of year I get the busiest. The rise in temperatures increases the lust inside the people, which they too often mistake for love. There had been ten couples coming along already taking pictures with their locks, kissing, hugging, and promising each other the things they would forget in a day. I would have smelled the fakeness of their locks even if I hadn't been there to observe. But then, a new couple came along. He had a bright smile on his shiny face, his aura too charismatic for his own good. His arm was tightly holding the waist of a woman, her face plastered in layers and layers of makeup. Luckily, I see through that. When I spotted a golden locker reflecting in the sun, I could hardly believe my luck. It was so damn authentic, it even smelled like love. If I hadn't been there right that moment to observe this scene, then I would have believed for sure that this love lock was created by the gods themselves. <laughs> but I was there, and while the lock smelled right and looked right, the couple certainly didn't. Their faces. Their happy faces couldn't fool me. You will understand that I had no other choice but to check on them further. It wasn't difficult to find their home. I just had to follow the nasty trail they secreted like snails. It was afternoon by the time that he went to the kitchen to cook a romantic dinner. Two bloody steaks, beans, roasted potatoes and some fish sticks. Mm. He opened a bottle of red wine and lit up candles she changed into a beautiful dress. They closed the door and enjoyed a romantic meal, only the two of them. That night, they would stay in the same bed again, which made the work a little harder for me. I had to wait until the next day. I stayed close all night, I had to be sure. That night, he stayed inside his room, but I know this wasn't always the case. Still, one loving day was enough that she would apologize and make excuses once again. We really needed that evening, just the two of us. And he was unbelievably sweet, she said in a loud voice. He's changing. No, he changed. Things will get better, I promise, she whispered. Finally, she got the kid ready for school and they left the home. I probably could have made the job easier for myself, but as I said, watching Bridges all day is unbelievably boring. And I need some excitement. So I went to the kitchen and grabbed the dirty steak knife from last night. I tiptoed upstairs and saw the lazy fuck lying in bed and 
and snoring the roof off. I held a cold night against his bare chest. His eyes opened wide, but he couldn't move. It's bad enough that you beat her face bloody every couple of weeks, but still managed to create something that looked realistic enough to be mistaken for law, isn't it? He tried to move, but could hardly even make a toe wiggle. Pathetic. I stung the knife right inside his chest. The terror in his eyes quickly turned into emptiness. I shoved my hand inside his chest, right to the heart, until I felt it. A key. As I suspected, it was black, not golden. He almost got away with it. He almost caused enough pain to lock them up for eternity. Their lock was authentic in most ways. But sometimes people mistake being a hostage with being in love. I could have ignored the woman's pain, but on the back of the lock was a third name. Somebody else who liked to visit some nights. It's always heartbreaking when a kid gets locked in. If I followed the rules, I would have to bind the couple's soul forever. Do you understand now why sometimes death is the only option? Knowing that there is an enormous number of black keys that stay undetected because of bureaucracy angers me to the extreme. That's why I need to take matters into my own hands from time to time. It might not be the same as the cry of a child being born. But feeling the person being freed from the suffocating emotion that the imposter masked as love can admittedly be quite cathartic at times.